is Kara. I'm Mary Louise. And you're the midwives here? Two yeah. of them. How many midwives are there? Five altogether. On the farm right now, there's three. Uh -huh. I'm a Santur, and we have another midwife up in Wisconsin on the Wisconsin farm. Her twin sister. Her twin sister. Oh. Yeah. yeah. How many babies have you delivered? Uh, fit about 57. How did you get into midwifing? Uh, I was drafted. Oh. <laughs> One night I got told to go help at a birthday and went. And what right. about you? How many babies have you? 18 I delivered. I got drafted on the caravan. Cause I was... I just got to help out because I was one of the only ladies that ever even seen a baby born. I'd only seen one born before. Uh -huh. I just started out from scratch. So neither of you had had any other kind of training? Mm -hmm. for, you know? No. Well, what uh, are some things that you really need to know to be a midwife? <laughs> Starting in generals, not specifics uh -huh. right away. Well, I feel like the main thing is that compassion. So you can know what somebody else is feeling and, and guide them through a heavy place, because it is a heavy place. And, that's, and, you know, we have really good sound technical knowledge behind all that. But that spiritual place is really the one that gets mm -hmm. our babies out healthy and grooving mm -hmm. and our mother keeps our mothers grooving. Like that. Hmm. It, it's really spiritual midwifery. I guess Stephen and I and may have... That's what we've really learned how to do it from then. I, I call it technical backup, like Carol was saying, really feels good and strong. Like our ambulance and all the equipment we have, and that makes it really solid, but it's the spiritual thing that really does it. Because yeah. each birth is really a miracle. We see miracles happen all the time. Yeah. We <laughs> really believe that, that each birth is the birth of the Christ child. Each one, each baby is just so, you know, so stone. Yeah, it's far out. You never get used to it, you know. I am. Yeah. Each time. Yeah. It's just so heavy. It's so heavy. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Um, well, are there any... Uh, how does one uh, develop this uh, feeling? I mean, a lot of women have been brought up fearing birth, you know, as the curse of Eve and... It's like a burden that we have to bear, and all we hear about is the pain. How do well, how do we? Farm, we just we kind of decondition to that because, you know, like everybody on the farm will see a real pregnant lady, you know, in this huge belly, and then you know a week later I'll see her walking around with her baby, and she's obviously grooving and, you know, looks very stoned, and mm -hmm. obviously I've learned a lot through the whole thing, you know. It's it's not a scary process, you know. It, I don't think anybody on the farm is. You know, everybody's so close to it, you know, and cl close to these babies, and it's all all one family that, uh, you know, feels like we don't have that on the farm so much. It's not a scary process. Mm -mm. I, I feel like following Stephen's teachings really makes you just ready to go right in and handle that because it's like, keep it together, don't complain, be really grateful, you know, and all, all those things just help you go through a thing like that. And, it, just enjoy it and be relaxed and grateful to be doing it and really appreciate that you can bring that life force through and mm -hmm. it and like not thinking of yourself you know being glad to give some of yourself for this child mm -hmm. and that attitude just makes it just the peak experience for every lady mm -hmm. it's something you're really grateful you got to do not yeah. not looking upon it as a hard thing to do yeah, if you're relaxed and when you're having rushes like we call them rushes because you just feel more like that. When you're relaxed, it feels good, you know. And if you complain and get uptight, then it's it's going to be very heavy and probably very uncomfortable, you know, and going to hurt. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you can, like, it's like, right, you know, I was thinking of it as riding a wave. If you can just ride with it and stay on top of it, you know, and just go with the universe, then it's just really a far-out experience. And if you fight it, it's still going to come on, you know. The universe is still coming on to you, you know. But it's going to, you know, it's going to feel really rocky and not feel so good. It's really a big, you know, attitude is really a big part mm -hmm. of it. Knowing how to trip, because it's just like a trip, you know. It's a psychedelic. Yeah. Getting it yeah. out with your husband really yeah. helps. Really helps you during having a baby. What about those ladies that are having problems with their husbands? How do they? We just have something. We have to sort that out till they make better friends, you know, till they get into better communication and get to know each other better and get to a higher level of truth and compassion. And whenever that happens, the baby just comes out. It's like magic. 
because the baby can feel both the parents. It's both, you know, it's a product of both the parents. And, you know, as soon as the baby feels that the parents are in agreement, it's there's no problem from then afterward. But sometimes the midwife has to get in there and really get to know the couple and see what's happening with them. How come, you know, how come this baby ain't coming out? You know, like we don't really believe in uterine dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So I think that the hospitals can call uterine dysfunction, which means that the uterus just stopped functioning and this baby's not going to come out unless you do something drastic, you know. Well, we don't believe in that. It's usually just some subconscious. Uh -huh. um, and mm -hmm. like that's mm -hmm. some of the miracles I was talking about. Uh -huh. You'll see over and over again, get in there and just start talking about yeah. how everybody's uh -huh. feeling and come across the place and just opens up. Mm -hmm. Connections get made and babies come out. I've seen one lady who, one of the first birthings I was ever at, she just wasn't acting like her old man was as good as she was. She was acting like he was a second class citizen, you know. And, and finally, we, we talked to her quite strongly about that until she had to straighten up, you know. And she thought about it for a while and then she just dropped her thing and goes, I love you, I love you, I love you. And the baby just flew out. Like, you know, that's so <laughs> amazing. I feel like, um, you know, the pain that we have to go through, or it is a painful kind of um, experience sometimes. Uh, life can be, it can hurt, but it's like overcoming that pain, it makes us really strong, you know, mm -hmm. and if we don't want to call it pain, let's go on to it. heavy. Heavy, okay, yeah. heavy changes, right. heavy, yeah. whatever you want to interesting say. Interesting sensation. Okay, yeah. vocabulary is, is a... It uh, makes a good. difference. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, we really I pay can... attention to, to how we talk at a birthing and how a lady talks, because mm -hmm. it makes a difference in mm -hmm. how she'll open up and come on. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's like, you know, get, we're giving birth all the time right. to ourselves, you know, because every day we go through some kind of changes, scenes mm -hmm. that people in this generation are just growing at a fast clip. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's it's that heaviness that sometimes we have to endure. And then, wow. <laughs> makes, it what's, <laughs> makes it worth it. Well, how does, um, I know... A lot of uh, the spiritual inspiration comes from Stephen. Oh, tell me some more about him, because I really don't know. I just I can see his vibration around here and all the people, mm -hmm. and I feel the love. Mm -hmm. what, what's he like? <laughs> well, I what like from. I can just tell you, like every time that it's ever been like really a heavy life and death place, he's always there for you, and always there for you to guide you through. You know, and that's. You know, at that really heavy place, that's when you really need someone to reach out to. And he's just always there. You know, like when I had my first baby, Anne was born on the caravan and none of us knew anything about anything. Mm -hmm. And she came out and, and she gave one cry and then just laid there and didn't breathe anymore. And Stephen was in another bus in another place in the parking lot. And right then he walked right in and gave her artificial respiration and, and got her going again. And it was just a miracle. You know, it was... You know, it's just such, you know, infinite wisdom for him to do that, you know. And other places like that in my life that, you know, it's really helped me free. Right. I noticed that um, people here seem to really be into the truth, you know, when they see mm -hmm. something that's kind of out of sync or out of harmony, people that are out of harmony with themselves, they're not afraid to, to say it, mm -hmm. you know, it's... Uh, is that part of what he's... Oh, mm -hmm. that's really part of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, it's just like compassion and, and telling the truth and living your life really truthfully, as truthfully as you can, mm -hmm. and just being really compassionate. That he's just, he's just a standard for that. Just always there. You know? And you can always go and check it out with him. And if he's not around, you can dream about him and he'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that happens to me a lot when he's away. Yeah. He's like the pure, you know, inside everybody has a, the one that they, you know, is really the right person and doing the best they can, you know, and just, you know, like the, the highest one you can, you know, come up with.